Hello, my name is Jacob Todson, and welcome back to the Wisdom of Odin. I'm completing a multi-week journey up here to Norway uh, to finish off this museum series that I've been doing uh, for a bit now. And so it started off in Copenhagen, where we went to the Danish National History Museum or the National Museum, and then we went up to Stockholm and saw the History Museum up there. Uh, and now I'm here in Oslo uh, to talk about the history and the artifacts kept in this city. As of filming this, I have no idea what to expect going in here. And so um, I'm definitely gonna compare it to the other two that I've seen so far as this is the end of the series. And uh, let's see what we find inside and what inspires us. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and this exploration of the Norwegian History Museum. So filming inside did not go according to plan as far as doing any narrative-based stuff. Uh, hopefully you can tell why. It was a very crowded museum here uh, and a very tight museum. And so doing any kind of audio recording, one would be really horrible quality, uh, like really, really bad. Uh, and then it was just really hard to get this footage anyway, just let alone me like trying to film in here. And I didn't want to, I, I want to be respectful to other people. So um, I think I'm just going to be at this park right now. Uh, I have this tree and I'm just going to walk you through the experience. I think that's, it's probably the, the best way. So anyways, let's talk about this museum. So this is definitely more of a traditional like 18, late 1800s museum. Uh, it has like three or four floors big central staircase and the multiple exhibit rooms. Uh, just like many historical museums you go to in Europe, it has sections for ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, and then usually a multicultural room which has artifacts from Africa, Polynesia, Asia, uh, Japan, all around the world. And then like one exhibit for like the rotating ones. And then it has one exhibit, one for the Viking Age. Nothing for the Bronze Age, nothing for the pre-Viking Age, nothing for the Stone Age really. Uh, so a little disappointing there. But as far as what was in the Viking Age room, uh, there were some really cool artifacts. So my personal favorites were the helmet, of course. This is the main object that is uh, the marketing material for this museum. And what is interesting about this helmet is that it was obviously found in a grave, and then it had uh, two spear stabs into it. So either the person wearing it was killed in battle, or this was part of some kind of ceremony. And as someone that is really interested into this cult of the spear dancer, this cult of Odin the wolf, I do find it interesting that spears were used potentially as a burial rite. Um, and there are also a lot of different uh, ceremonial objects as far as weapons that have been thrown into uh, bogs or uh, burial mounds that have been broken or murdered is the term that was used here in this museum. I haven't heard that before, but it was kind of cool. Uh, so they murdered these weapons, meaning they can't be used anymore. They have been stabbed by another weapon. There was also a grave of a potential uh, shield maiden, which is interesting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of information on it, so I'm gonna have to do some side information digging there. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was really cool. And uh, then there's a gigantic rune stone in there uh, that has a lot of really interesting artwork on it. Um, uh, some really interesting designs, including a very simplified sun, which I haven't seen before in uh, Scandinavian uh, art from this era. Uh, and a few really interesting depictions that definitely call to uh, some of the depictions on the uh, Scandinavian stones in Scotland as well. So you can see uh, like the transmission of culture as Vikings were settling and raiding into Scotland and into England, uh, their style of artwork was getting carried over as well. And then of course we have what I've seen in the previous two museums, a collection of jewelry, crosses, uh, lots of weapons, um, lots of women's artifacts. Uh, so this is really common. There was a lot of these, uh, which I mean, maybe, you know, from what I'm, I observe in my travels and what I've, what I've read, this shows that women during this era, at least during the Viking era, uh, were quite wealthy in the sense that they, they presented themselves quite wealthy. There, there's a lot of these grave goods of these uh, really beautiful, uh, like, uh, chess pieces here and then the the necklaces as well there's a lot of really intricate women's wear from this time I mean, it, it is really beautiful and i think this is why we see a lot of people in the reenactment community with the viking stuff uh, really get into it because the viking age stuff is really beautiful the main thing here the really exciting thing and this i did not know was here 100 percent so because this is a really really recent story um, within the last few years and that is the oldest rune stone in existence is now here at the norwegian history museum uh, so this goes all the way back between a thousand ce to 
250 CE. And um, I mean, I was pretty excited. <laughs> I, I, I am really tired. I'm so sorry. Uh, the other two videos I was running around like, oh my gosh, like I'm the same way with this. Uh, it's just because I'm not right in front of it. When I was in front of it, I was like, oh yeah, this is so cool. But I had like 20 people around me. So I, I had to kind of contain it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this is a 2000 year old runestone. Let that sit in for a moment. What you're seeing on screen right now is 2,000 years old, roughly. Uh, and it has a very simple inscription. It's in the Elder Futhark, uh, and it is very rough. It's not like it is as intricate as the later ones. It's not as intricate as like the, the big runestones we see in fields. It, this very well could have been used for practice. That's what I actually saw into it. Um, I don't see a finished product here. This is something that people were practicing on. Like you were teaching someone how to write the runes, uh, you know, like, oh, a little Ivar, you need to carve these runes. And then they're practicing with words and practicing with spelling because this is something they would have had to do in the past. Uh, if you needed to learn how to carve the runes, you would have to do test just as we do now with any kind of writing system or artwork. Uh, and you know this was the primary writing system that we know of uh, so that's how I read this this is a practice piece of stone I don't know if this is what archaeologists have said or historians but this is my you know just natural reaction to seeing this I'm like oh this is a test kit this is a test uh, baby's first runes uh, so this is what I saw uh, but of course, the, the overall uh, implication of this 2,000-year-old runestone is that the runes existed, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago. And more than likely, this isn't the first one. This isn't the first runestone ever written. Uh, there, there's probably no way this is the first runestone in existence. Uh, it's just the only one we know about. So uh, potentially, runes go back even further. Which if the mythology of the runes follows suit with that, that means the mythology of Odin and the mythology of uh, runes in general goes back even further as well. And uh, so, yeah, that's a really exciting, just like imaginative thing. You know, how much further could they go back? What was the origin of the runes? Is it truly this mythological story of Odin uh, hanging from a tree and, and taking them up as well? Who knows? And, uh, but this is a, certainly a piece of the puzzle, even if I do think it's a, a baby's first rune set. So I have to admit, my excitement is down for this video because I'm a little disappointed. And if this museum existed in, in a vacuum where it was the only Viking Age museum in history, one, we would be at a loss because there's not a lot in here. Because this is the main artifact museum in Oslo. The main artifact museum in Norway, from what I know. I have seen another one up in Trondheim, which had, I think, even more artifacts than this one. Uh, but this is the one most people know about. The one up in Trondheim, it seemed like no one visited. Uh, and so this is, this is what most people see. And it, it was honestly, kind of sad. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. It's one room, kind of. Uh, there's the room for the uh, the room for the oldest runestone. Uh, and then there's the one chamber. And that's it. Uh, and I did talk to someone. There's an, uh, more artifacts here. They just only display uh, this one room at a time if, the, if there's not a special ex ex uh, exhibition. Uh, and I also kind of talked with some people. And it seems like the, the main reason this is, that this is, this is it, um, is because, uh, and why these aren't as elaborate as like Copenhagen's or Stockholm's, is because the population of Norway um, is smaller, uh, you know, I think by half uh, from Denmark and Sweden. Um, and then there are less artifacts here to some extent, uh, because once you get past a certain point, uh, there's very few uh, historic sites. However, I have trouble saying that, you know, concluding that uh, because I've been up to Trondheim uh, and one of my research uh, doing there, if you haven't checked out this video, is that I found islands uh, like the Frost Peninsula that at one point had 100 plus burial mounds in it hundred years ago and now it has two maybe five seven but so few burial mounds now uh, so it makes you really think what happens to these artifacts um, you know do farmers just dig it up throw it into the trash I don't know and so a lot of Norwegian history I think has not been as well preserved and I don't mean that in a way that to, to attack Norwegian people, to attack Norway, I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, the people here are wonderful. Everyone I talk to is so friendly. I really am happy to be here in Norway, but there is this layer of sadness to the way history has been preserved here and how it is presented now. Because we know that Norway is not a poor country. I mean, it's one of the most expensive countries in the world. Uh, and, you know, they have a, a really good economy here. Uh, it's often listed as one of the best economies in the world. Uh, and yet they have, one of the, the the poor displays of any of the Scandinavian countries of really any of the history museums I've been to. I'm going to record this bit much further into the future, but I'm recording this to simply say I'm in Edinburgh right now, one of my favorite museums uh, in Europe in general. And uh, this is me critiquing Oslo. Oslo is a really rich city. Norway is a really rich country. Uh, and the museum honestly is disappointing. Uh, that's the finest way I can put it. 
because this is Edinburgh. You know, this it, it's not really often considered like the you know pinnacle of museums, but this is five floors all of Scottish history, and the Oslo Museum of History couldn't even barely fill a room. Like that's so sad. There are dozens of rooms in here and five floors of Scottish history. To prove my point further, there are more artifacts here in the Scottish Museum on Viking Age history than there is in Oslo. Why? Look, this whole room is Viking Age artifacts. I just, it doesn't add up to me. I don't get it. Uh, and maybe, you know, I'm just angry. I'm upset. Uh, and I've just been thinking about it ever since I left that museum a few weeks ago. Is I just don't understand how the capital of Norway has almost nothing. I just don't get it. Um, and so maybe this is just me being frustrated. I don't have a concurrent, like a concrete argument of why. Uh, you know, and even the displays are just better. It seems more well maintained. I've come here many times and everything's just, I mean, I don't get it. Well, let me know down below if you know more, but really maybe I'm just trying to shout it out into the universe. Like, I'd like to see Norway do better. Um, I, I expected so much more uh, from Norwegian, um, you know, preservation. And maybe that's something I want to try to fight for or encourage people to fight for is better preservation of Norwegian history. Because um, I've seen it in the other Scandinavian countries. I've seen it in Finland and I've seen it here in Edinburgh. So um, calling out the Norwegian museum system uh, no offense to people in Norway, no offense to historians that work in Norway who fight already to preserve these things. Uh, but I think this needs more attention uh, from people around the world as Norway uh, can do a lot better preserving their history um, because this is just crazy to me. And I think a lot of it has to do with money, is that, you know, these kind of things, like the Bronze Age, why was the Bronze Age not represented at, at this museum? And my theory, I could be wrong, my theory is that the Viking Age was not profitable until a few years ago. Vikings have always been a thing, but until like the Vikings TV show, until the movies came out, until the music really started picking up, people really weren't interested uh, in this era of history as much. Uh, and so in recent years, it's become more interesting. And so I've been noticing that a lot of this research into the Viking Age in Norway has come up since the, the media hype has come up. And so I think, and again, my theory is that Norway, the Norwegian government didn't get really, really invested in its history until they realized they could start making more money from it. Uh, money makes the world go round. And this is no different than Stockholm and Copenhagen. And I wouldn't just sit here and, and complain about it um, if I didn't think I had a solution or at least an idea of what we can do. It's just, it's simply interest. We need more people interested uh, in these subjects. Uh, that's the only thing that's gonna get the Norwegian government interested, I think, uh, is more people getting in degrees in history, uh, more people actively interested in preserving the history here in Norway, uh, more of an active interest in uh, just this, uh, the Bronze Age in general. Uh, the Viking Age is cool, but we need more, you know, people need to see that the Bronze Age is interesting. Uh, so let's talk about the Bronze Age more. But I know there's the Viking Ship Museum, which is closed right now as of the time of me being in the city. And they are renovating it and they are going to uh, move more of the Viking artifacts there. And so they're going to do a much nicer exhibit. And this is funded by the government. So maybe not all is lost, maybe not all is bad. Uh, and they're seeing this as well. So hopefully the change is on the horizon and this is a good thing. Hopefully the government has seen that there, there is interest in these things. Uh, but what that means is, you know, when you take these vacations, you know, don't necessarily go to the beaches if you're interested uh, in history, you know, come up to Oslo, uh, check out these museums when they open. I think next year is when the, the Viking Ship Museum here uh, opens. Uh, and I think it was something that did have to get petitioned. I think um, if I remember correctly, uh, the museum didn't have enough funding and it wasn't gonna get it. And then there was a huge petition that went online and a lot of people filled it out. And this was what led to it getting funding. And so that means, what that just means everyday people getting interested in these things does work uh and so i think that's an important thing to take away from this this video as well so this video didn't end up exactly like the other ones because it just 
uh, I guess it was more of a message about uh, the preservation of history, the preservation of uh, mythologies, really. And I think one of the, the things that really struck me is I was speaking with someone the other day, and they were an immigrant. They moved here, uh, I think, 15 years ago. Uh, and they came from the Middle East. And I was just like, hey, so how do you like living in Norway? And they were like, oh, I love it here. You know, amazing people, amazing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they, the one thing they said is they were like, I would love to learn more about the history here. I want to learn about the culture, the society, and the preservation of it. And so I know there's this, there is a conflict within uh, immigration in the Scandinavian countries. I'm not blind to it. However, I do think that people are interested and, and we need to provide them uh, the history, the culture, the materials. Uh, I'm an American traveler and I have things I need to work on myself and, and work on with the United States. Uh, and so maybe this is just my way of talking to Norwegian people is, is show interest in your country and share the interest in your country. I think people from all around the world want to know more. And so let's all do our part in preserving the history of our, our local societies, our local cultures, uh, and our world. And I think that's just ultimately how we're going to come together better. So sorry this video is a little bit more preachy than most of mine. Uh, but I wanted to give you my raw and natural thoughts here, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So let me know down below what you think of my raw and natural thoughts here, uh, and what you thought of the, the History Museum here in Oslo, and if we are taking the right steps for a better future in the preservation of history. Thank you very much for this series of exploring the Scandinavian history, um, all of these countries, uh, all the people that have talked to me along this way uh, from all around the world uh, and here in Scandinavia. Thank you. I am amazed at the friendships I've made along the way and the knowledge I've gained. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next adventure here on The Wisdom of Odin.